hello come in i can't believe it's february already february the first and i haven't done a woolly pod this year so here it is i thought we'd sit and have a little knit and a little catch up on my knitting exploits now i'm just sitting here knitting my northeasterly blanket um i haven't done much on this this year I'll just stick in a little excerpt here of um, progress so far. and Blue wanted to help. So I'd made a little plan what I was going to talk about and I've deviated already. Um, blue very helpful yes every knitter's worst nightmare isn't it and um that's how much i've done on my northeasterly blanket in about a year now i haven't knit any of it for ages i did quite a lot early on because it was quite portable but as you can see now it isn't really and i've forgotten what i'm doing and you might hear blue actually she's skittering around after that little bit of playfulness um but yeah i can't believe it's february already hold on i just need to um count my stitches while i do actually you give barry your order if you're new here and you've got absolutely no idea what i'm talking about my name's ashley i've got a little channel here called paper and twine i do all sorts of stuff coffee shop drivel bit of cooking card making and crafting and knitting which is one of my loves um I'm, i've just got some notes here which i've completely um thrown out the window <laughs> But yeah, if you're new here, Barry, my virtual barista, will take your order and look after you. Mm. And there is plenty of room for everybody. So I need to count my stitches here. That's that. Two, four, six, eight, ten, nine. One more. And then I've got to slip a stitch. Yeah. So this northeasterly blanket, it's a pattern on Ravelry. Um, it is a trending pattern or a pattern that has been very popular for some time it's very easy to do and one of the reasons it is so popular is because um, it's designed to use your scraps and um, if you're a prolific knitter you have lots of scraps and I'm just joining you can't see now I'm just joining here and then I need to try and remember what I'm doing on the right side this is the wrong side not that it really matters there is a right side and a wrong side but they do look fairly similar um, I did notice at one point I don't know where it's gone now I was picking up my stitches incorrectly I was joining incorrectly as I went and it wasn't giving me the neat finish that I wanted um, but predominantly this is using look I've got ends to cut there I've knit two strands together so I don't need to weave in there is a tutorial on how to weave in as you go but I can't make head nor tail of it so these just all need snipping they've been um, knit for about 11 stitches so um, they'll be absolutely fine and I'm, I'm, I've got a bit of a cold again anyway um, yes I, this is predominantly using my yarn advent from elderflower stitches uh, in 2021 which was a pastel rainbow um, and i didn't get her advent for 2022 um, <clears throat> but i have got some more of her little bits and pieces susie her name is she's lovely and um yeah i'm just trying to remember what to do here because it's been so long since i've done it i've forgotten i think it, it is intuitive and it is very rhythmic and it is lovely kind of tv knitting and in this time where we are all trying to keep warm 
this is like having a blanket on you because you are knitting a blanket and I've made a decision that um, I'm knitting pretty much the length of a um, what do you call it the length of a column before I go on to the next one and um, yeah I think I've kind of remembered what I'm doing but what else do I need to talk to you about um, let's have a little thing oh the socks now those of you that were with me before Christmas you saw that I was knitting some socks and every single pair of socks went down well with everybody they all liked the color and the shape and um, the length and the fit they were all really well uh, received and um, my two daughters as most of you know don't live at home they live in Leeds and it's just my son who's currently at home so um, I haven't seen the girls wear their socks recently but Harry wears his all the time and they were bright pink I'm just going to put this down while I talk to you um, just actually yeah I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a minute I'll just pop it down there and have a slurp of coffee um, yeah so his socks are bright pink I used quing fiber which I think is an Australian no no it is dyed in London and I got it from loop and it wasn't cheap but it's so beautiful and it is so lovely to work with mm. I've just got an Americano coffee um, but yeah my colds are really coming out now so yeah what is on my needles well my northeasterly as you can see there and um it's predominantly pastels as you saw in the little um insert that i put in but i bought this last year which um i'm gonna if i've got time today i'm gonna wind and uh, start integrating this because it just needs a little bit more a little bit more depth um, so this is Edelweiss fibers hand dyed yarns and this is called sweet to hyacinth 425 meters on 100 grams I think that was about 23 pounds but it's lovely colors isn't it I really like that blue don't know whether it likes me but I like it yeah so northeasterly is on the blank uh, on the blanket on the needles and um, that can go in there. Um, hmm, Norwin. I've made no progress with Norwin whatsoever. So here she is. She's been like this for about a year. This is the very first mystery knit along that I joined in, and that's as far as I've got. I do like that at the bottom. That was very satisfying to do. But all I've got to do is her mittens, which I think are in. Um, a yellow, uh, no, her mittens look which I've started are in this bright green colour. I've got her plaits and her nose in here, I found them, so that's her plaits, they're like little cables that need sewing on. Can you see? And her nose needs sewing on so I've got to kind of shape it like that put those ends back on themselves to make it a little little round that's really cute isn't it and that's her that's her nose to go on the front um, and then she's holding an ice cream in a cone just pop those safe in there because I had I lost these and I'm really glad I found them now I'm not quite sure what color I'm going to do the cone I'll find something I'm sure but I've, I've got this for the ice cream which is like bits of raspberry ripple and it's got it's actually hedgehog fibers the same as what this is and it's got all these colors in it I'm a bit close sorry um so I might do the ice cream cone it's got three little balls in that or I might just use scraps I don't know um because that'd be nice for something else how much is on here this is really nice and bright I might knit myself a pair of socks in this because I haven't got any socks myself 
Um, I hope you've all found somewhere to sit and that Barry's looking after you. Let me know what drink you've ordered. I'd be interested to know. If it wasn't half past 11 in the morning as I'm filming this, I'd perhaps have a slug of Baileys in this. It's my cold for purely medicinal purposes. Mm. Right, it doesn't say. Yes, it does. 400 metres, 100 grams. That's hedgehog fibres. I bought that from a yarn story in Bath five or six years ago. Yeah. Anyway, Norwin, you can go back in there. Perhaps she'll be finished next month. Take a bet on it. What do you think? <laughs> what are the odds? Now, the next thing that's on my needles, I'm quite excited about. I think I showed this in my last woolly pod that I was going to knit it. Let me find the picture of it. This is a really old book, a Rowan book. Can't get it all in because I'm really close. Uh, it's called Angora Hayes, uh, 14 Designs by Martin Story. And I'm doing this, Thelma. That's what I'm doing. And I, I bought this yarn many years ago. Now, every year I go to Bath. Um, we didn't in the pandemic, obviously. Uh, but for, oh, I want to say probably 11 years a whole group of us that used to work together go to bath the first week of the summer holidays um we're all either still teachers or in education or ex-teachers that have retired or given up or whatever um and we used to go for two two nights but um last year we went for three which is lovely and i bought this there used to be a wool shop in burford because what we do is on the way we stop at huffkins in burford which for those of you that might be american burford is a traditional cotswold town market town um beautiful absolutely beautiful a little tourist spot and we stopped there at Huffkins for breakfast on the way to Bath. It's about halfway on our journey. And um, there used to be a wool shop there. And I bought the yarn for this and the book in the wool shop there because I hadn't got any knitting to take with me. Because there's quite a few ladies that are knitters. Um, anyway, I think I'd started it. But then I've come down a size because I have lost two and a half stone or more since I um actually I've lost yeah from my heaviest I've lost three stone uh, but I have done the back it obviously needs a good blocking that is the right side and it's this gorgeous lace and cable pattern I did make a mistake on the cable there the uh, there's three cables and the last one is supposed to go in the opposite direction to the first two but it's the back it doesn't really matter um now it is lovely yarn to feel and touch but i just question the pattern the stitch definition isn't isn't good enough i don't think um maybe it'll perk up a bit when it's blocked but it is lovely so i've done the back and um oh, where's my other little bit last night here it is down here last night i finished one of the sleeves so it's short sleeved i don't know what color i'd wear this with black probably but um the, the color's called embrace and it's kind of like a heathery color so that's the sleeve now the reason i've done the back and a sleeve is because I've altered the pattern slightly. For the size that I'm I doing, it said you needed six balls and I purchased seven for the original size that I was doing. But um, obviously the model in the picture is young. It's a short cropped jumper. I've added five centimetres to the length because a woman of a certain age, you don't want to see my bits, do you? So yeah, so I'm just checking that I think I've got enough and I think I will have. So that is currently what is on the needles oh I've forgotten something let me just go and get it hold on sorry about that I forgot what I was talking about now but next on my list is showing you um what I'm in the middle of frogging so um I showed this yarn on 
um, a previous woolly pod. Um, I found a pair of needles here. Um, again, this was Quing Fiber, and I forget the name of the colour. It was a really interesting colour. I can't remember now. Rebel, I don't know, Rebel or something. But I was knitting a shawl um, from a pattern on Ravelry, and it was kind of like a... Um, it had got a fan pattern going on or a little lace pattern and and I couldn't get it to work out and I was I was changing the pattern because it was in garter stitch it was garter stitch lace and I thought garter stitch didn't suit this yarn because it it's got the most beautiful colors in it so I'm in the middle of frogging that and I'll find something else to do 400 yards I need to remember not 400 meters so that's me frogging that's me frogging that's that's cat chaos waiting to happen I've just thrown that on the floor ah uh, now finished finished what is off the needles so I am wearing sorry I might have just squished you I'm wearing my Audrey cardigan um I think is it Isabel Kramer I can't remember the designer it's been a long time in the knitting I think I started it last year um the I've only worn it twice this is the third time and the yarn is pilling a little bit this is Swan's Island which is lovely and soft this is Quince and Co Lark or Sparrow it isn't quite as soft it, it, it feels like it's got a chemical finish on it whereas this feels very very um, organic and lush but I do like it um, I haven't done the best job on blocking it I've never really blocked a garment that I've knitted in one piece before um, and I do like this and what is really nice is that in the picture if you go on Ravelry um, to have a look at the pictures the the arms are down by the side and the arms kind of like the band of colour matches the band of colour around the bottom and I wondered whether mine would but it does so little little attention to detail little finishing touches are lovely and as I say it's all knitted in one piece but you've got like faux seams running running through it and it is super snugly warm and it has been really really cold here in the UK up until quite recently today I think it's set to go to a heady seven or eight degrees and the sun's coming out now which is good that i'm nearly finished um so what oh yes ah yes other finished item drum roll it's the mystery knit along the knitmas knit along big reveal are you ready and i'm not going to get this all in shot i have blocked it i am so proud of myself this is the Fair Isle section that I did with the snowflakes, the mountains and the trees. That's the bind off. This was really lovely to do. This is mosaic stitch. Let me find a bit that I really like. Love that bit there. The contrast of the deep blue and the mustard. Love that. So I'm going to bear that in mind for um, something in the future but now I've had a, a go at stranded knitting um, here's the top section which I'm not so keen on and you can see where this bit here is a bit looser I think if I do this kind of thing again I do need to go up a needle size when I'm doing stranded work because you've got that kind of bowed shape despite me doing my best to block it but um, I am really, really pleased with that. It's a bit long. I don't know whether I'll wear it, maybe. I've got a linen dress, a uh, long sleeve dress, this pink colour. So that might kind of just zhuzh it up a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. And I did keep up with it. Uh, I didn't post every day in the Facebook group. And I got behind with my um, little youtube shorts i've just seen a little sand piper or something bird oh he's ever so pretty um yeah so let me know in the comments what you think let me know what's on your needles if you're a knitter um i'll leave my ravelry name in the description box come along and and um 
make friends with me. I don't go on Ravelry very often in terms of forums and things like that, but maybe it's something that I need to do. Now, goals, knitting goals for 2023. I did um, allude to the fact in my Meat, Paper and Twine two years on video on the 2nd of January that I'd got goals for 2023 and one of them was a knitting goal and I've got two knitting goals now and um, one of them is inspired by somebody that I discovered on YouTube and I'm really sorry I've forgotten the name off the top of my head now I'll go back through my history and I'll leave a link to them in the description box but they were talking about using what you've got knitting up what you've got now one of my big goals for this year in terms of knitting is to re-photograph all of my stash and catalogue it on Ravelry so that I know what I've got and things that I know I'm really really not going to knit I'm going to either donate to charity or sell if it's good stuff so that is one goal knitting related the other one you might just see that light box behind me it's not a very good light box the battery's gone so you can't see and it hasn't got any numbers which is a real shame and it's only got two rows it's quite a small one so it doesn't do quite what I wanted it to do but I got this idea from this this knitter on YouTube and um, she along with quite a lot of other knitters have set themselves a target to knit 10,000 meters of yarn from their stash and I shared this with Mr Paper and Twine and he said you've got 10,000 meters I said I've got more than that so when I've catalogued all my yarn I'm going to work out how much it is in terms of meters and kind of um aim to knit as much as I can and it'll be like I mean 10,000 meters is only 10 kilometers isn't it but like if I've got something like I don't know 100,000 meters that's 100 kilometers that's kind of like from almost from here to London I could knit my way from here to London where I live you know so I think that'd be quite interesting but that's supposed to be lit up when I do a woolly pod with numbers to show what I've done now I'm not counting my northeasterly blanket knitting because it's hard to judge that because I'm using little bits and pieces. So garments and things that I'm doing, I am cataloguing. So, so far this year, I have knit my way through three balls of this, 25 gram balls at 75 grams in total at 137 meters a ball. That is 411 meters I have knit. So not quite half a kilometer. <laughs> So yeah, by the time I finish that uh, Angora sweater, um, we'll be closer to maybe six and a half balls. Um, yeah, so that is one of my other goals. My final goal, and I can't believe here we are in the second month of the year and I've done sweet FA about it, is to publish a pattern on Ravelry. Now I have done a little bit of designing in the past. When I was a student, I was very much into my knitting and I had a Saturday job at um, a yarn store in Covent Garden and I worked for a designer called Patricia Roberts. Very sadly, I believe she died last year and I think she was 70. Um, but she went to um, art college or art and design college in Leicester, I think and she won a Duke of Edinburgh Design Award in the very early 1980s or very late 1970s and her knitwear was iconic and I still love it actually. I've got some on the needles which I am going to finish this year. Some of it is a bit dated, some of it is really really um, like 1980s big mohair and you know that kind of stuff but some of it is really timeless and um, classic so I worked in her Covent Garden store um, for at least a year and I had a Saturday job there and then when I graduated from uni I hadn't got a job I worked full-time in her shop over the summer and then I worked in her head office as an assistant stock controller which was really really interesting seeing the yarn coming in seeing how her pattern books were photographed and put together and it was really really interesting I forget where I'm going with this oh yeah but I was quite interested in my knitting at that point and I did um, make up a few little garments for 
friends. I remember um, one of my close friends at uni, for her 21st birthday, I made her a little jumper. Um, I don't think she's still got it, but she does talk about it. And it had little squares of angora in it, and it's very much Patricia Roberts inspired. Um, so I have designed stuff, and back in 2012, whoa, a long time ago, I entered a competition uh, organised by Debbie Bliss. We used to get this magazine in the UK, and we don't anymore. I think it is an import. It was an import. I don't know whether it still is even printed anymore. Uh, but she ran a competition to design a blanket, and you had to knit it and send it to her. And the blankets were donated to a charity called Give a Hug. And um, I sent mine off. You had to use one of her yarns. Uh, and it had to be a baby blanket and it had to be a certain size and I actually came third I was the second runner-up I don't know whether you can see that there here second runner-up Ashley Thompson from rugby I think this was the overall winner yeah this kind of Russian doll was the overall winner um, and then this was the second prize, which was cro uh, garter stitch. And then mine is here. You can see a bit of it. They didn't photograph all of it. And I don't even know whether I've got a photograph anymore. I've still got the pattern. I worked out the pattern. But mine was inspired by the sea. I spat at you then. Sorry, that was really rude, wasn't it? And I used... I think it was four colours of the Eco Baby cotton and it was seaside inspired and it was all it knit in one piece divided by cables and a lace in a grid um, and it spelt out seashore and the idea was it was quite textured um, but a blanket that could grow with the child rather than being cutesy cutesy baby baby it could grow with the child it got texture for touch because babies learn by touching things and it was a muted colour palette so it was gender neutral and yeah I won a prize I didn't win the year's worth of yarn which was the first prize which would have been really nice but not, not that I needed it but I did what did I win I won two books I think one of which I'd already got but they were signed by her um, and a free copy of the magazine so I've got two of these magazines somewhere yeah so my other goal then is to publish a pattern on Ravelry and um, I've got one, I think, that's really easy for beginner knitters, for children, that um, I've got a nice photograph of that I'm going to put up there if I can find it. I need to do it as a PDF because I think it's just as a Word document. Um, and I'm going to put that up there as a free pattern. Um, I designed a scarf for um, a neighbour of mine. We used to have some neighbours that were quite well off. They're divorced now. Um, and she commissioned me to make a big chunky scarf for her they weren't married then fiance um, and I designed a really nice um, cable motif scarf so I could find that and maybe have a go at putting that up there but it's a case of thinking I don't think I'm good enough to design a garment if I did it would have to be one size <coughs> um, but accessories certainly I could do um yeah and I've got lots of ideas but it's just finding the time when I want to knit stuff for me as well and all the paper crafting and working part-time and looking after parents and being a wife and a mum or you know it's just there's not enough hours in the day are there um yeah so I need to knit something and you know test knit it with some nice yarn and get it out there yeah. Anyway, I have witted on for absolutely ages. Didn't intend this woolly pod to be this long. But yeah, it's okay because there probably won't be another one for three months. So, because <laughs> I'm not going to come back until I've got something to show you and talk about anyway. Um, if you like this content, if you like me driveling on, if you want to know more about the coffee shop drivel, uh, look at my playlists on my channel. Um, and yeah, I'll... I'll be back tomorrow actually with a coffee shop drivel. So do take care everybody and I'd love it if you subscribed. Bye now.